What's up, guys? So I want to bring you the story that not a lot of people know about, but that actually a few people have been requesting. Um, this was a business venture that Elvis got involved with Dr. Nick and Joe Esposito and a building developer um, in 1976, around that summer. It was about racquetball, and we all know that Elvis, you know, that was one of the sports that he got into later on in life, you know, basically, primarily to help him uh, get on a good exercise routine, stay healthy, lose a little bit of weight. Now, this story comes from the book, The King and Dr. Nick. And uh, so Dr. Nick tells the story like this. He says that him and Joe Esposito uh, were getting into this business venture to help as an investment towards their retirement. Now, at this point, Elvis wasn't involved. It was called Racquetball of Memphis. So at this time, just before they came to Elvis, they had already broken ground on a few racquetball places and they were looking to expand. Uh, now, at that time, they had an agreement with uh, two business developers to purchase and begin building in Memphis and Nashville. Now, this is where Elvis comes in. So they had one year to secure financing on the uh, sites and they came to Elvis asking him if he would want to become a full partner. Now, they weren't asking him for upfront money or anything like that. They just wanted the use of his name, and they thought that using his name would help attract investors and cause members to come to the facilities, you know, so they could attract uh, a membership. That's where they'd get primarily the uh, majority of their money. The long-term goal of these racquetball courts was to expand the franchise and go national and um, gather members, like I said, and have it become like a, a long-term retirement uh, income source, a passive income source for Dr. Nick and Joe Esposito. When they presented the business deal to Elvis, he seemed positive about it, but he asked him for a few days to talk about it. They explained to Elvis that it was going to be a private club with maybe eight to ten courts, but it wasn't just going to be a typical, you know, racquetball place with just a few small cores and just some lockers and gyms uh, they were going to have it uh, like a really nice type of thing like a spa like with saunas uh, they can relax and enjoy food and drinks as well as playing racquetball like a social event which elvis seemed to like so after a few days elvis decided to become a partner uh to 25 percent and full membership uh, the right to use his name, but no upfront money, and uh, Elvis signed the deal. Now, this is where everything goes haywire. Um, according to Dr. Nick, he says that when Elvis was on the road, Dr. Nick wasn't actually with him in this particular instance. Um, he was on the road without Elvis, and he says that one of Elvis's aides says they were spending Elvis's money recklessly. Now, keep in mind, Dr. Nick says Elvis gave no upfront money anyway. But the aide to Elvis says that they were spending his money recklessly and claimed that one of the, one of the developers uh, purchased a car and they hired a pricey secretary and were, were paying that person just crazy amounts of money. And Elvis didn't stop to, you know, check first they say that he exploded. He called the developer in the deal because it was Elvis, Dr. Nick, Joe Esposito, and a developer. And uh, he says he exploded when I write. He went off on this guy and says that he wants his name taken out. He wants out of everything. He wants nothing to do with it. As you can imagine, you know, Joe and the developer and Dr. Nick, you know, were a little shook up about this. You know, they already spent a lot of money on advertising and the names. Um, so uh, Dr. Nick, you know, knew that once he once Elvis got back to Memphis, that he could probably talk to him. Elvis is a reasonable guy. After he's got time to cool down, Dr. Nick can talk to him and just sort things out and patch things up. Well, Dr. Nick wasn't able to do that. Now, here's where uh, the tricky thing comes, comes into play. Um, they had already purchased, they already changed their name from Racquetball of Memphis to Presley Center Courts. And they put merchandise up, they had shirts, logos. So since Elvis wanted out of the deal, they had to redo everything a second time. So they had to scrap all that stuff, all the money that they spent, and buy new signs, buy new merch, get new logos, and that whole deal. 
So now that Elvis's name was off all the merchandise and the logos, once investors found out that Elvis didn't have anything to do with it, their interest in investing in their company cooled down. And so they were able to keep a business for a while, but Dr. Nick says for whatever reason, they weren't able to come up with financing. So that left Dr. Nick, Joe Esposito, and the building developer, or the developer, um, liable for the lease coming up because they had one year to secure money for it. So they were starting to get behind on their notes. Um, their attorney went to Elvis's attorney to discuss a loan for maybe $40,000 for three years at 7% interest so they were able to meet their obligations and wouldn't default. Their attorney also says that they were entitled to $25,000 in damages from Elvis because Elvis went in, signed the papers, and then decided not to honor his agreement and walked away. That $25,000 was for damages and expenses and having to redo everything, as you could imagine. So what finally happened was um, Elvis's attorney did not respond in writing to the proposal and they were advised to go forward with the lawsuit. Dr. Nick says that he wanted to show Elvis that it was an important business matter and that he couldn't just blow it off if he got angry. Um, what eventually happened was uh, Elvis did pay the $25,000 to them as they requested for the damages. And he also gave them a $40,000 loan, which they asked for. And Dr. Nick says it was paid back in 120 days. Now, the center courts without Elvis stayed in business until 1981 when they were eventually bought out. And as you could imagine, um, there were some bad feelings uh, between Elvis towards Dr. Nick and Joe Esposito over the business deal. That fell through. Um, obviously, they eventually patched it up. Uh, but Dr. Nick wanted to point out here in his book that it wasn't that Elvis had you know, put in large sums of money and he got into a bunch of entanglements and it caused him problems. He said he wanted to set the record straight and tell the actual story. So according to Dr. Nick, that is what happened with this racquetball situation in 1976. And I uh, hope you enjoyed a little bit of this Elvis history. And if you have, hit the like button. It helps to grow and expand the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And we'll talk to you next time. So Elvis was a great guy and really cared about his friends and wanted to help them in any way he could. But I think um, maybe a flaw that Elvis had was he was a little too trusting. It was a good idea, but I think at this time, 1976, he had had it with some of his friends and family members, um, including his bodyguards. And once he got the slightest hint that this wasn't working out as planned, he wanted to cut the deal. As far as Elvis's financial future being secure, rather than touring all over the place, I wish that he would have invested his money a little well. Uh, or a little better, because uh, he really didn't do any of that at all. He was just basically living uh, for the moment and thought that the money would always be there. And it probably would have been because Elvis's name was so big, he always could go on tour and generate money. And then if he ever got wise to Parker and let him record some of the things that he wanted to, he could have his uh, recording career could have picked up. Hey,